Okay, so this is the second tutorial on the foramina of the skull. In this tutorial I'm going to be looking at the different structures that pass through the foramina in the skull. So the vessels and nerves that pass through these little holes. And it's quite important to know because, um, well, medical schools love asking about which structures pass through which foramina. So just starting from the outside, um, I'm assuming you've watched the tutorial before, um, and also it would be quite useful if you've watched the tutorial on cranial nerves or if you've read up a little bit about the cranial nerves, make it a bit easier to understand. So looking at looking from the outside, um, starting inferiorly, we've got the mental foramen, foramina, and you can see these nerves and vessels emerging. You've got the mental nerves and the mental vessels that emerge from here. You've got these foramina just below the orbit, the infraorbital foramen, and you've got the infraorbital vessels and nerves that come out of here. And then you've got this little notch here called the supraorbital notch. So you, you can see these supraorbital vessels and nerve runs through this notch. And then we've got the foramina in the orbit of the eye, the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to an intracranial view. So that's the base of the skull, wrong view. Um, here we go. So this is the view we were looking at in the previous tutorial, but now we're going to be looking at nerves and vessels that pass through these holes. So starting anteriorly, so we're just look we're just looking sort of from so th this is looking from behind um and if I just rotate round this is anterior this end and posterior is this side so you can see here this big nerve so now we're looking from the front directly at the brain stem and the nerves that are emerging from it so you can see this big fat nerve which crosses over this is the optic nerve and you can see this bit here which is the optic chiasm so this nerve passes through the optic canal so we can look at that from this is cranial nerve 2 and you can see it passing through this hole here so the optic chiasm lies here and the optic nerves run out through the optic canal so that's cranial nerve 2 that goes through the optic canal and if we look at it from the front you can see it coming out so also what runs through the optic canal is the um, ophthalmic artery so you've got the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery that run through the optic canal So next we've got the superior orbital fissure, so this is this big opening in the skull here and you can see it from the front anteriorly, you've got this superior orbital fissure and if I zoom in quite a bit you can see that the quite a few little nerves emerge from this fissure. So I'll just flick back to the other view and we'll take a look at what those nerves are. So this is where knowledge of the cranial nerves is quite useful for learning what passes through the foramina. So you've got a couple of nerves, quite a few nerves that pass through um, the superior orbital fissure. You've got the ocular motor nerve, the trochlear nerve, the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, the abducent nerve, and you've got ophthalmic veins that pass through here. So a lot of structures to remember. But here we're just going to be looking at the cranial nerves. So if I just rotate around, you can see this nerve here, um, which is the ocular motor nerve. So that runs through the superior orbital fissure. So just remember, these are all nerves to do with the eyes. So the ocular motor nerve is to do with the movement of the eyes, trochlear nerve is to do with the movement of the eyes, ophthalmic nerve is a branch of the trigeminal nerve which is to do with sensation around the eye region 
um, and the abducent nerve is the nerve responsible for abducting the eye. So these are all eye muscle and eye sensation nerves that pass through the super, superior orbital fissure. So if you just think of the, the muscles um, of the eye and which nerve supplies them, these are generally the nerves that pass through the superior orbital fissure. So you can see this nerve here, which emerges um, just medial and inferior to the inferior colliculus and winds around and passes through the superior orbital fissure. This is the trochlear nerve. And then you've got this nerve which comes right from the base of the pons. So if I zoom in you can see that. So this nerve coming from the base of the pons, this is the abducent nerve and that passes through the superior orbital fissure. And then you can see this this thick trunk here. This is the trigeminal nerve and it's got three branches. So you've got the you've got the superior branch here, which is the ophthalmic branch. You've got the maxillary branch and the mandibular branch. So trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve five. Um, and the branches are labelled 1 to 3. So this is V1, the ophthalmic, V2, the maxillary, V3, the mandibular. So you've got the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve passing through the superior orbital fissure. So again, it's, it's related to the eyes because it's, it supplies sensation around the eye region. Um, so those are the four nerves which you can see passing through. Just to go over, you've got the oculomotor, the trochlear, the abducent nerve, and the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal. And you've also got um, ophthalmic veins which pass through the superior orbital fissure. So next working we're going to go down to this so we've just looked at the superior orbital fissure so that's just to show you again that was this fissure here that's the superior orbital fissure and now we're going to be looking at this little hole here the foramen rotundum which you've got obviously on either side So that's that little hole just inferior to the superior orbital fissure. So it's this hole here. And what you've got, as you can see, um, you've got another. You've got the second branch of the trigeminal, which passes through this. The foramen rotundum um, allows the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve to pass through. So you can see that on either side. this branch here. The maxillary branch passes through the foramen rotundum. And then just looking at the next branch of the trigeminal, the mandibular branch, you can see that passes through this foramen here. So that's this one, the foramen ovale. So the mandibular branch V3 of the trigeminal passes through the foramen ovale. So I mean there's quite a lot to remember with all these different structures passing through all these um, foramen. Um, and I actually remembered it using a really silly mnemonic, um, which may not make any sense, but it helps me remember stuff. And the more stupid things are, the easier they are to remember. So I had a friend called Max who was pretty fat. So I thought of Max as rotund, so the maxillary branch passes through the foramen rotundum. My fat friend Max, Max is rotund, maxillary branch passes through the foramen rotundum. Um, and I didn't have a friend called Mandy, but I imagined a Mandy and I imagined she was oval. So 
Mandy is oval and Max is rotund. So the maxillary branch of the trigeminal passes through the foramen rotundum and the mandibular branch of the trigeminal passes through the foramen ovale. So Mandy is oval and Max is rotund. That's how I remembered it. It sounds stupid, but it helped me remember. Um, so that may be useful, or maybe it's just a load of rubbish. Um, so those are the, we've gone through the superior orbital fissure, the foramen rotundum, the foramen ovale, and we've done the optic canal. Um, so next, we're going to keep working our way back. So just to show you this view, so the optic canal, the superior orbital fissure there, the foramen rotundum, the foramen ovale, and now we've got this lateral foramen, which is the foramen spinosum. Um, so what we've got passing through here is the um, middle uh, meningeal artery. So that's that artery that lies behind terion and is often um, damaged by blows to the temple. So if we just take a look, uh, no, not that view. So this is the foramen spinosum, lateral to the foramen ovale. Um, so I think the best way to show you this is from the base of skull view. So if you just see what I'm doing, I've got the skull here. I'm just rotating it so we can see 